Welcome to our Community Care Series by Cedar Memorial, another contribution in our long history of supporting the community. Well, welcome to our Community Care Session by Cedar Memorial on forgiving what you can't forget. My name is Dr. James Coyle, and I am uh, the Certified Grief Educator, along with the Grief Care Specialist at Cedar Memorial. And our hope during these sessions is to give you tools throughout the journey of your life. Today's subject is forgiving what you can't forget, and this is a very, very difficult thing to talk about because I think all of us have a tendency to hold on to things that maybe we shouldn't. During this session of community care by Cedar Memorial, we're going to identify the anchors of pain and the isolation of unforgiveness. We'll look at how forgiveness heals, how forgiveness liberates, and then we're going to explore some tools to help us forgive the things that we can't forget. Forgiving what you can't forget, our thoughts and emotions, they can hold us hostage in our grief journey. It is so hard to get beyond the guilt or the unresolved stuff of our loved ones or the loss of things. Unforgiveness is just an anchor in a very dark place. So learning to manage our pain can pull up that anchor and bring light into the dark place so we can move forward in the hope that there's something bigger and better beyond this circumstance. Forgiveness breaks the chain that anchor our mind and soul. It's quote by Catherine Ponder, when you hold resentment toward another, you are bound to that person or conditioned by an emotional link that is stronger than steel. Forgiveness is the only way to dissolve that link and to get free. Forgiveness is almost never easy, especially when you feel that you've been wronged or when you hold yourself hostage for something that you did or maybe didn't do. But it's the only way to break the bonds of blame and bitterness. You see that unforgiveness, it holds us down in a very dark place. When unforgiveness anchors in a person's life, it can be a poison to ourself, a poison in our relationships, a poison to organizations, a poison to everything that we touch. Once we're anchored, it will grow quickly and it will cause trouble. Actions will be done, words will be said to yourself, self-talk, or said to others that can't be taken back. Wounded people wound people. Wounded people wound people. You'll become stagnant in your recovery the longer you deny the forgiveness. When it stays too long, unforgiveness often turns into bitterness. And once that sets in, there's rage, there's malice, there's depression. All of this can make your heart a home for these destructive emotions. Allowing these detrimental feelings to stay there will eventually make you even sadder and will lead you to physical harm as well. You may not want to forgive, but you need to forgive. See what unforgiveness is, it's just this huge big ball of stress. 78% of people that are in the hospital are there with stress related issues. You may need to forgive the person who died or the person who is no longer in your life. You may need to forgive the person that you feel is responsible for your loss, responsible for your pain. You may need to forgive yourself or even God. Maybe you need to forgive the things people have said or done that hurt you, your feelings are made that have made you mad since your loss. Most people don't intend to be insensitive, but so be patient and forgive them. Whatever the case, forgiveness is huge. Forgiving someone is not for the benefit of that person, it is for the sake of you. 
You are the one that will suffer from unforgiveness. And it's you that will benefit from the act of forgiveness. Forgiveness provides healing and it liberates your energy and your creativity. And this quote from Desmond Tutu, until we can forgive, we remain locked in our pain and locked out of the possibility of experiencing healing and freedom. Locked out of the possibility of being at peace. Forgiveness is a return to love. I need to say that again. You need to hear that, that forgiveness allows you return to love. I have an acronym for love, living outside of vulnerable experiences, L-O-V-E. The things that, that haunt us, that capture us and bring great pain are all vulnerable experiences that we suffer with. We get healthy emotionally. We get the opportunity to do, do good versus being held hostage and doing things that we know we shouldn't do. We have three equal parts that we get to learn how to love again in my thought life, in my emotional life, and in my behavior. See, what forgiveness does, it liberates our thoughts. Maybe you have been held hostage in your thought life by a wrong, a perceived injustice towards you that you haven't been able to sleep and that just causes stress. Well, forgiveness allows your thought life to return so you can get a restful night of sleep. Forgiveness liberates our emotions. It's being able to feel again because sometimes we are so stuck that we can't feel like we used to. Whether it's the anger or the pain that has gone there, there is a stone that has just evolved around my heart. What forgiveness does, it just gets to come in and take the pieces of that stone and allow your heart to feel again. It liberates our emotions. Forgiveness liberates our behaviors where we can begin to do new things again, be creative. We have new energy as a result. Here's a quote by Steve Maraboli. The truth is, Unless you let go, unless you forgive yourself, unless you forgive the situation, unless you realize that the situation is over, you can't move forward. That brings us to our next point, uh, how tools can help us forgive what you can't forget. When you forgive, you release. When you release, you progress. Is it time for you to move forward? Here are some tools to help guide you if you're stuck, and maybe tools that you can use to help other people get unstuck in the pain of unforgiveness. Overcoming bitterness will allow us to get back a part of our life that we lost. These tools can hopefully help us reestablish the values and the comfort to our damaged soul. Use sweeteners instead of bitterness. I was on a deployment in Haiti and we had crush wounds there. This is back in 2010, they had a lot of people. But we didn't have anesthesia, we didn't have medication. And so people came in as we treated them in our, in our little hospital that we could help the Haitians. They came in with open wounds and we had nothing left. And one of the doctors said, I need you to grab every packet of sugar from every MRE on the island. And so we confiscated and opened up every MRE. For those of you that don't know what an MRE is, it's a meal in a bag. And that's what we do on deployments, we eat a meal in the back. We cut it open and took all the sugar out. So I want you to picture a wound. You don't have to go graphic with me, but I'm gonna tell you this. We began to pour sugar in these open wounds and wrap it up. And then they would come back three, five days later where we would change the dressing. I have never witnessed such miraculous healing by using sugar in an open wound. 
It's an incredible, incredible thing. So think of the wounds in your life. If you pour sugar into your wound, rather than the bitterness, then that sweetener will begin to heal it. Forgiveness is the act of surrendering our desire to retaliate or to revenge. Forgiveness is the antibiotic, the sweetness that we can put on a wound which allows the healing to take place. The opposite of bitterness is sweetness. Stop talking like bad self-talk. Telling the story of what happened to you again and again in a negative way to yourself or everyone that you meet is a form of anchoring your, yourself in that mud. It, may, it might be harder than we think not to mention what happened to us at all, but give it a try. If you don't heal your wounds, you will bleed on those who didn't cut you. If we don't heal our wounds, you're gonna bleed on those that didn't cut you. So take responsibility. Take what responsibility that you can. If you see that you're part of the bitterness, accept that and then move forward. Many people who are bitter are too ashamed to admit it. And then here's what shows up. Attitudes, cynicism, critical spirit. And I can tell you this, anybody that is so pointed, they are so painful, they just point the finger all the time because they're in pain. Stop building your case. Seems like we always have a need to build an army to validate our pain and our bitterness. And then it becomes a war within us. And the bigger our army is, the better we are prepared for that battle. The need to recruit warriors in the heat of battle is the beginning of an outside war that does not have a winning outcome. Stop collecting evidence. Oh my, we just want to validate our pain, so we'll collect things just to validate it. We'll go out of our way to spy. We'll go out of our way like a private detective to, to validate the pain that we're in, our thoughts, the time, our actions. They're just consumed with finding new information. Focus on the future. Too often we lose sight of anything positive when we are steeped in our bitterness. Scraping the mud off of the windshield gives us something to hope for, something to look beyond. Hope puts our eyes elsewhere. When we focus on things that we can't manage, we take the power away from the things that we can't manage. There's always a battle for your thoughts. There's negative, there's positive, there's good, there's evil. Whatever we feed, we become. And if you need help, ask for it. If the bitterness won't let go even after you've tried some of these things that I've mentioned, maybe it's time to seek professional help. It's okay. Working with a professional can help you see possibilities that your pain has blinded you and it might allow you and give you new tools to heal the one wounds that are holding you back. This is a tough subject, but unforgiveness is an anchor in a very dark place. So let's learn together how to overcome unforgiveness because forgiveness can break the chains that anchor our mind, that anchor our body, that anchor our soul. Forgiveness provides healing and liberates your energy and your creativity, which allows us to forget the things or to forgive the things that we can't forget. It allows us to forgive the things that we can't forget. Thank you for allowing us to walk beside you in this journey of unforgiveness to forgiveness. I hope that this has helped you and can set you on a new path that will liberate you and give you new hope, new emotions, new feelings.